Welcome back to Morning Blend. I'm Brittany Begley and for both Walt and Kirsten. Let's jump into your daily blend. All of today's national and local top stories in about five minutes. All right, Kevin, you're in the hot seat because a lot of folks are going to need their low beams today in the traffic center. That is true. And by right? the way, this is not the first time I've been in the hot seat, Brittany. It's happened before. But yes, <laughs> as Brittany was referring to, fog, obviously a main thing that is going on this morning. I'll get to that in just a second. But first, what I want to talk to you about is I just received reports of a hit and run. This is in South Sacramento, right off 65th Street and Florin Road. If you are using that area or going to be around that area, you can use 47th Avenue as an alternate route. Now, what Brittany was talking about, of course, that fog is out there. We have some patchy fog. I know Rob is going to touch on it in a little bit, but just a couple of things I wanted to remind the drivers as you get out, just to kind of set the tone. One, drive slowly, and two, be sure to use those low beams instead of high beams to make things a little bit easier. A couple of drive times for you guys from Tracy to Livermore. Traffic is picking up there. You're looking at about 62 minutes from El Dorado Hills into downtown, only about 20 minutes. Rob, how's that weather looking out there? You know, I'm looking at that Tracy Livermore commute, and I'm thinking, and you know what? This is kind of an odd work week for a lot of people because I, I know a lot of people going back to work today. So even though it's a, a Thursday uh, right after New Year's, uh, this is this is kind of how it's going down. There might be more traffic than you would expect. And the one thing everyone's going to have to deal with is the weather because we see foggy conditions everywhere. You talked about it. I want to show you where we're seeing the fog. I, I had a lot more fog out here in the Gilmore backyard and about an hour ago. So it's just a reminder that this is a fluid situation. I want to highlight this just because I, I think this is sort of lost and forgotten because it was the middle of the night. 3.8 earthquake, pretty significant off Ventura County being felt by a lot of people in Southern California early this morning. The fog ebbs and flows and right now we're seeing some dense stuff set up just past Fairfield. Other than that, I see it getting actually better, not worse over the last hour and perhaps uh, we've got 30s and 40s out there so it's cold maybe the wind is the secret sauce here because I have seen the wind pick up just a little bit within the last hour but this is the area until 10 a.m. that you have to at least be aware of we're looking at dense fog setting up at any moment in the Sacramento area and San Joaquin and Stanislaus County areas among others highs close to 60 degrees rain really rain yes I think that we could see a little bit in the middle of the night not today, not tomorrow, but watch it kind of flow in there in the middle of the night between Friday and Saturday. Now, the bottom line is this, the timing is really helpful because it's in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, but it's a little rain, it's a little snow. We'll talk more about it later on in the show. Back to you. Thank you, Rob. At 533 this morning, a man is in critical condition after what witnesses say they saw a drive-by shooting in North Sacramento. Now, it happened around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon outside an apartment on Traction and Bowl Street. Investigators say they don't know who shot him or even why. They're asking for any information to come forward. And violence is not new to this area. Back in October, another man was shot on the same block. While well, happening today, a NorCal rapist, Trout, returns to court. Roy Charles Waller was arrested in September 2018. He's charged with sexually assaulting at least 10 women across Northern California in the 1990s and early 2000s. That's why we have Carlos Herrera joining us live to tell us what we can expect from court today. Yeah, Waller's hearing will continue here this morning. And a lot of people really following this case very closely. And this is where we expect one of his latest victims to take the stand and where we also expect very graphic uh, testimony about one of his latest cases actually uh, it happened in October 2006 where a, he raped or allegedly raped two Natomas roommates. Authorities say though, take a look at your screen, the 59 year old faces 40 counts alleging he is the man who targeted at least 11 victims in many Northern California communities from 1991 through 2006. He's sexually assaulting women in Sacramento and five other counties, including Butte, Contra Costa, Solano, Sonoma, and Yolo. The Natoma's rapes are thought to have been the last in the series of attacks. Now, in the beginning of the hearing, a former Sacramento police officer who investigated the rape said both victims indicated they had their hands and feet tied and their eyes and mouths covered with duct tape before they were attacked through the night. The last month's testimony lasted about 45 minutes. Waller, who was dressed in an orange Sacramento County jail jumpsuit, sat and simply listened in. The full preliminary hearing, though, could last 
several days here in a Sacramento courtroom. We'll keep you updated with everything that happens. Brittany, we'll send it back over to you. Yeah, like you said, a lot of people care about this story, so I look forward to your updates on Twitter and Facebook as well. Thank you so much, Carlos. Of course, at 536, we got to get a check of sports with you as well, Kevin. It's morning, Brittany. We are remembering David Stern, the former NBA commissioner who was instrumental in keeping the Kings here in Sacramento. Stern had worked for years to keep the team in sack by stopping others from buying the team as long as Sacramento recruited a new ownership group. Here was Stern when the Golden One Center opened just a few years ago as part of the agreement to keep the Kings here. The Golden One Center is located at 500 David Stern Walk. He passed away yesterday, less than three weeks after having a brain hemorrhage. In a statement, the Kings' Vivek Ranadive said in part, David will always be remembered as Superman in Sacramento. David's enthusiasm for our city and belief in our fans will never be forgotten. Kings GM Vladi Divas paid his respects on Instagram saying, quote, respect to the man who had a vision and made it possible, to someone who made the game of basketball global. And here's what Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg had to say on Twitter. Sacramento will owe David Stern a deep depth of gratitude for generations to come. He believed in our city and its promise. We continue to see a lot of those coming in and just a lot of people just so mm -hmm. happy for what David Stern meant to the city, to the NBA, and just the global impact that he did for the sport of the National Basketball Association. Yes, you are absolutely right. Thank you for traffic and sports updates. All right, let's get a top, a look at your top stories trending right now with your Daily Blend. Deployed to Iraq, troops in North Carolina are on their way to the Middle East to reinforce the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad that's under attack. Protesters stormed the compound Tuesday. They've since backed off, but the embassy is still on lockdown. This is all part of a bigger picture of increased tensions with Iran since President Trump ripped up the nuclear deal and increased sanctions. Wildfire emergency this morning. Devastating fires are raging across Australia. At least 18 people have died. Thousands have fled to the coast as strong winds push the flames toward their homes. One fire crew was forced to take shelter in their truck. When we were in there, in, in the thick of it, we thought that this could be it. Some of the fires have been burning since September. PG&E tug of war. Federal and state agencies are now fighting to get money out of the nation's largest utility. They want part of PG&E's $13.5 billion settlement with the wildfire victims. The money would help cover costs of responding to those fires. State agencies say they're owed more than $3 billion. Federal agencies like FEMA want more than $4 billion. And that is your daily blend. If you have something you want to share with us, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10.